Hey, this is Joanne, and on March 13th, Friday the 13th, here in Illinois, we are going to celebrate Pluto Day. And that would be because the Illinois legislature, much like that of California and of New Mexico, we've decided that it's just a travesty that Pluto is no longer a planet and uh, state legislatures are allowed to decide otherwise. Maybe not. It's probably not good science policy, but it is all in good fun. And I do miss Pluto as a planet, but not as much as if I were in third grade. Um, and so, in response to all the interest in Pluto in its <clears throat> rise and fall, uh, there's a book coming out, and all you people in Illinois are free to pick this up and read it in honor of Pluto Day. And this book is called The Pluto Files, The, Ri the Rise and Fall of America's Favorite Planet. And uh, the man who wrote this is Neil deGrasse Tyson, and he's that popular, humorous, knowledgeable, classy astrophysicist we see on TV quite often. He is also in charge of the Rose Earth and Space Center in New York, where all the controversy seems to begin. Um, uh, so let's talk a little bit about this book. First, I'm just going to talk about the size of the book. It's so small and tiny, it also happens to be quite dark. Hmm, that seems a lot like maybe Pluto is. So along that vein, if I wanted to write a book about Mars, it would probably look like this. What if I wanted to write a book about Jupiter? It might look like this, really big, with a big red spot even. And so now that I've entertained all of you third graders out there, uh, let me tell a little story of when I was a third grader. I was fascinated with astronomy in, at that age, and uh, there was a little card from a magazine that I could fill out and order some uh, a fold out card set of all the different planets and all the things we knew about the planets including uh, the gravitational force and its uh, density and uh, the number of uh, moons that it had and Jupiter back then had way fewer moons than it does now I mean, it didn't but that's all we knew about and I sat there on my bedroom floor and in my best third grade handwriting, I wrote a letter and I said, I will send you two dollars. And I run downstairs to my mom and I said, Mom, here's the letter, will you check it for me? And she says, oh, well you're going to want to have to write that you enclose two dollars. And for some reason that just seemed like such a revelation and suddenly I seemed so smart <laughs> that I knew this little trick. Because it's true, that's what I was going to do. And then when it arrived, I was just very excited. I carried it around with me in the little purse. Uh, it was just so much fun. And I would say, if, if the fall of Pluto had happened back then, I would have been devastated, as apparently are many, many, many third graders across the nation. And uh, it's this controversy that Neil deGrasse Tyson discusses in his book. And he starts by uh, talking about a little bit about the culture before Pluto was discovered. And uh, then he, he goes, launches right into its discovery by Clyde Tombaugh, who um, was born on a farm in Illinois, although claims to hail from Indiana. So, of course, Illinois is going to take advantage of this fact and say, yeah, because of that, then, you know, Pluto's really our discovery, like Obama's our discovery and some other odd characters in the form of governors, <laughs> and anyway, so um, the, he discusses, so Neil deGrasse Tyson discusses how Pluto came to be, how it came to be named, and then how it sort of became popularized in culture, thanks to, of course, Disney, uh, with the, the dog named Pluto, among other things. And uh, of course then, let's fast forward to more recent years when there started to be some scratching of the heads, like, well, I'm not sure, you know, that Pluto's actually a planet. Uh, let's not forget that we didn't really have a definition of a planet. But we, we weren't sure that Pluto was actually a planet because we started to find other rocky substances in what we call now the Kuiper Belt um, circulating, you know, orbiting way out, uh, out in, at the further reaches of our solar system. So. You know, the writing was on the wall that maybe Pluto would not be considered a planet much longer. And uh, Dr. Uh, Tyson, in his work at this uh, Earth and Space Center, when they designed uh, the scales of the universe, you know, with a really large sun and a very large Jupiter and a smaller Earth and an even smaller, um, you know, uh, Neptune, 
here. We, we needed, you know, he left Pluto out. And people started to notice that Pluto was left out. And it seemed he was single-handedly responsible for this, uh, you know, this miss, you know, this movement towards not calling Pluto a planet. That's not necessarily the case. Um, and it took a lot more meetings of scientists and astronomers to finally demote Pluto. And uh, this book is such a darling, darling book. I have to say, this, this would just be a lovely addition to any classroom and to any home. This book is printed all on nice um, glossy paper because it's full of cartoons and letters from third graders, which many are very hilarious as you can imagine. And it has songs and poems in Ode to Pluto. Um, many, many beautiful pictures. Here's including from the Rose Earth and Space Center. Um, and this book was just a lot of fun to read and informative. So um, cartoons uh, when the fall of Pluto came about uh, was were the most entertaining. And I really enjoyed this book. I'm going to highly recommend this book, especially in light of the fact that it is going to be Pluto Day here in Illinois in just a few days. Um, but I think it, it would touch the heart of all Americans to understand um, how we can go from venerating a planet to to demoting it and then to still see our hearts you know move towards this planet <laughs> so I want to thank you all for listening today and go ahead and get this book thanks bye